Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. So when temptation comes, now hopefully this is turning some lights on for somebody. Every time you're tempted, that doesn't mean that you're a terrible sinner. It means that you're a human being. And that the devil is not happy about you. Amen? And sometimes the more that you do right, the more things you may go through because he's going to see if you really mean business and if you're going to hold firm. Now, James 1.12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried... He shall receive the victor's crown of life. Blessed, happy, and to be envied is the man who is patient under trial and stands up under temptation. For when he has stood the test and been approved, he will receive the victor's crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Well, what is this victor's crown of life? We looked it up in the the Strong's Dictionary of the original Greek words. And the victor's crown of life was like a, a badge of royalty. It was a badge that, uh, uh, that sports people would get or runners would get whenever they crossed the finish line or whenever they had a victory. And that badge of royalty gave them special access to special places. It would be like if you got a badge to come into the back room with us tonight. Well, you know, what Jesus is offering you is much better than that. Amen. Do you know that when you are willing to endure, to endure, let me ask you a question. How many of you, especially maybe some of you, you young people, you are willing to endure not being invited to the party losing some of your friends, staying home and being lonely for two or three months rather than to go hang out with people that are going to drag you down into a pit and tempt you. How many of you are willing to endure that loneliness? Come on, now just listen. See, we, the flesh doesn't like to go through anything. I don't know if you know it or not, but we're pretty addicted to comfort. Amen? Amen? The right escalators and elevators, and we don't want to be hot, and we don't want to be cold, and, you know, my goodness, we just created a mess for ourselves. We've had so much convenience. And, but if you endure, say you endure that time of loneliness, and you endure that being left out and not being invited, then when you make it through that time of testing and trial, then God is going to give you the crown of life or this badge, this special badge of royalty that gives you special access into places that only God can open up for you. Let me tell you something. God can open doors that no man can open, and you better pray that he closes ones that no man can close. I have no interest anymore in trying to push doors open and shove doors open and trying to get in with this social group and trying to get in with that well-known minister. I don't want to be with anybody. I don't want to be anywhere. I don't want to be around anybody if God didn't put it in front of me and give it to me as his gift in my life. So when you're going through difficulty, just remember that you're going to come out like Jesus did out of the wilderness, having survived all those temptations with a brand new endowment of power from the Holy Ghost, a brand new anointing, and you're going to come out with a badge of royalty that's going to give you Holy Ghost access into places that nobody else could open up for you. Come on, give God another praise. Now, if I could just give you the very simple definition To endure means to outlast the devil. Everybody say, I'm stronger than the enemy. I know more than he does. I can outlast him. And I'll be better for it when I'm done. 
Now, temptation comes largely during times of trial and difficulty. Somebody hurts your feelings, you're tempted to get mad. Somebody does something really bad to you and you're tempted, just like I am, to be in unforgiveness, to be bitter and to be resentful, to close, shut them out of your life, to tell everybody what they did to you, to speak unkindly about them, to never speak to them again, to want to get them back, to want revenge. Oh, man, we, it's pitiful how we are when our feelings get hurt. I said it's pitiful how we act when our feelings get hurt. <laughs> of course, we don't remember during those times how many times we've hurt somebody else's feelings. And well, you could just forgive me and give me a little mercy, you know, just, I didn't mean it. But the Bible teaches us that we can overcome these temptations. Let's talk about some ways that we can overcome temptation. Let's look first at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Now, this scripture is so long in the Amplified Bible, but I am going to put it up here, and we are going to look at every word of it. You know, I've decided that I'm going to start spending more time having people actually look at scriptures on these. You know, I mean, you're blessed. You don't even have to find it. We're putting it up on the screen for you. Probably actually be better if we made you find it, but that would take too long. And... Uh, because I really think that something wonderful happens in our heart when we see it. I think when you hear it and you see it, something gets in you that might not get in you otherwise. So, no temptation, just look at this with me, no temptation, no trial regarded as enticing to sin, no matter how it comes or where it leads, has overtaken you and laid hold on you that is not common to man. So, can you just say this? I'm not going through anything that other people aren't going through. You didn't say that much like you meant it or cared. <laughs> I'm not going through anything that somebody else is not going through. Come on, make this easy for me tonight. Say, I'm not going through anything that other people aren't going through. Thank you. See, that wasn't hard. <laughs> that is, no temptation or trial has come to you that is beyond human resistance <laughs> and that is not adjusted and adapted and belonging to human experience and such as man can bear. But God is faithful to his word and to his compassionate nature, and he can be trusted not to let you be tempted and tried and assayed beyond your ability and strength of resistance and power to endure. I love this. But with the temptation, he will always also provide the way out. Can somebody say hallelujah? hallelujah. God will always provide the way out. The means of escape to a landing place that you may be capable and strong and powerful to bear up under it patiently. So let's look at five ways that God helps us get through or get out of these things that come against us. How many of you go through what I'm talking about? You have things come against you. How many of you don't want to keep failing? You want to pass the test and be victorious and, you know, I think a lot of times we worry too much about where our trials are coming from. Why is this God? And I don't understand if it's God. Why is it so hard? Is it the devil? I rebuke you, devil. I'm not going to put up with this. <laughs> and you know, actually, I don't have time to get into this tonight, but if you do a, a deep, more theological Bible study on this, you'll find out that, that some trials not tempt, God does never tempts man to sin. He cannot be tempted with evil, and he tempts no man with evil. But when we're in times of testing and trial, if there are weaknesses in us that God wants to strengthen and, and, and change, then they will show up during those periods of time. And so for that reason, they end up working out good for us in the end because they show us things that are hidden as long as everything is going good in our lives. But when there's a little pressure, then out pops these things that you didn't know was there. And you're like, oh, good. I got a dozen or so people that are understanding this. Do I need to say that again? 
Uh, do you ever do anything that just surprises the living daylights out of you? You're like, man, where did that come from? I mean, I, I still remember when my kids were little and I was first getting into all this. And man, I tell you what, I was so spiritual during the day when nobody was home. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm telling you what, I, I got along with everybody. I loved everybody when nobody was there. <laughs> Come on. I mean, I had this wonderful idea, this theological, ideologic about, I surrender all. I'd listen to my music and listen to my teaching cassette tapes back then. And I would just be so spiritual. And you know, I can remember one of my kids, and one of them's here tonight, Sandra. She, she used to just, she just dropped stuff all the time, right? You just drop stuff all the time. And I, I remember her dropping a whole pot of vegetable soup in the kitchen floor one night. And back then we had carpet in our kitchens. Can you imagine that? You talk about a mess trying to clean that up. And, and sometimes uh, I remember one of my kids coming through the back door one night and I was always at the kitchen here. <laughs> and the garage was right here and she came through the door and tripped on the step and threw all of her books across the room. And <laughs> Can't you ever come in this house without destroying everything while you're getting in? Now, how do you go from, uh, <laughs> because you see, as long as there was no pressure, come on, I'm talking to you. I said, as long as there was no pressure, you never know what kind of fruit you got till it gets squeezed. <laughs> Has some of you had your fruit squeezed this week? And so actually, if you know how to handle it right, you can actually ask God to forgive you, apologize to somebody if you need to, which I'm sure we all need to do a lot of that. But then you can actually say, you know what, God? I'm actually kind of glad that happened because, boy, I saw something that you need to deal with. Now, God, I can't change myself, but I'm willing to be changed if you'll work with me. Come on, doesn't that sound good and refreshing? But what did I do for years and years? I don't understand. I'm so terrible. I just, I'm not a terrible mother. I don't even know if I'm saved. How can I even consider teaching a Bible study? What makes me think I can be in ministry? <laughs> and the devil's just off somewhere going, <laughs> Because that's just what he wants. We must know who we are in Christ. We must know that we have a high priest who understands. He understands. And you know what? When your child is a year old, you don't expect them to act like they're 20. And when they're three, you don't expect them to act like they're 30. And God understands where we're at and how far we are along in him. And I want to tell you the truth, and I can tell you this, and I believe this all my heart. It does not matter to God one iota that you have not arrived. The thing that he's concerned with is, are you pressing on? Did you hear me? Don't be upset that you're not grown. Be happy that you're growing. Hallelujah. And you know what? You're all wonderful. You wouldn't be here tonight if you didn't care about doing this right. I mean, maybe a few of you here, somebody drug you here and you really didn't want to come and you took one look at me tonight and thought, I don't even like her. I don't know what I'm doing here. But nonetheless, we pray that God will sneak up on you and help you anyway. But the biggest majority of you that are here, you're here because you want to get on with God's plan for your life. Amen? And so why don't you just compliment yourself and say, I'm on my way to great victories in my life. So, all right. So there's no temptation that we cannot resist, none. First way, first thing to do is don't be condemned because you're tempted. We've talked enough about that. The second thing to do is 
The minute that you feel tempted, or even more important, if you have an area in your life that you know is a fairly consistent temptation, then don't even wait until you're tempted to pray. Pray ahead of time on a regular basis that when you confront that thing, you will not come into temptation. Jesus said, pray that you don't come into temptation. Don't sit down and eat a half of a chocolate cake and then try to rebuke the calories. <laughs> don't pray after you eat it that you don't get gain weight. <laughs> Instead, you every morning when you spend time with God, you pray that that day you won't overeat and you'll be able to resist whatever temptation comes to you because you recognize and know that that is a weakness in your personality. If you're tempted toward wanting to control every situation, if you're tempted toward selfishness, if you're tempted toward, you know, sexual areas of weakness in your life, don't wait until you're just in a full-blown case of temptation. Pray on a regular basis and even find a good friend that you can trust Share with them, I need help in this area, and I'm asking you to pray for me that God will help me get through this and I'll be able to, be able to do what he wants me to do. Now, I wrote this in my journal this morning. I've kept journals for years and years and years and years and years and years, for probably about 35 years, and it's just something I do every morning. And this is what I wrote in my journal this morning. I do believe that prayer is our only hope of having the help that we need in life. It is our secret weapon. It is a mystery filled with power. Who can understand the mystery of prayer that God would need us to pray before he could do something? But the Bible does say you have not because you ask not. So here's the thing. If you don't ask for help, you're not going to get it. Unless somebody else is really good at praying and they're praying for you. Thank God for the people who pray for us when we don't know how to pray for ourselves. But you know, when you grow up a little bit and you know how to pray, then we, we need to learn how to pray about everything every, in every circumstance. And we need to do it right away. And you know, if you look at prayer properly and you see how simple it is, you don't have to make some big religious, hyper, super, huge, massive religious job out of it. It's just really just having continual Communion with God all day long and just letting him into every area of your life. And whenever you feel the least bit weary or tempted or you, you think you're about to get mad. Or, you know, I mean, I had to pray several times this week. God, help me not to stay mad. Help me not to stay mad. I, I didn't want to, but I was. But I, I, was, I refused to stay that way. So I start praying, God, help me, help me, help me. Or in any area where I'm tempted, you just start praying, God, help me, help me, help me, help me forgive. Help me get over this. Help me not to have a bad attitude. Help me not to be jealous of that other person's blessings. Yeah, sometimes I feel jealous. Do you ever feel jealous? Oh, no, you're too spiritual for that, I know. <laughs> Do you ever feel jealous? Hey, yeah, you know, somebody else gets what you want, and, you know, you're like, well, what about me? I hate to tell you this, but more than likely you won't get what you want until you can be happy for somebody else who's getting what you want while you don't have it yet. I think I'm going to say that again just for the fun of it. I said more than likely you won't get what you want until you can be happy for somebody else who gets it while you still don't have it. And maybe one more time. Verily, verily, verily I say unto you. And again, I say unto you, <laughs> like Paul, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. More than likely, you won't get what you want until you can be happy for somebody else who gets what you want while you still don't have it. That's a good word tonight, folks. You say, well, I can't help it that I don't feel happy for them. No, you can't help how you feel, but you can start praying right away. God, I am not going to be jealous. I do not want to be envious. God, help me be happy for them. And then you get your little buns over there and you say, I congratulate you. I'm happy for your blessing. It's the most awesome thing. Even if you feel like it's ripping your guts out, you do what you know you should do. And here's what happens. When you do what you know you should do, your feelings will catch up with your decision. That's, a, that's one to write down. 
If you do what you know you should do, then your feelings will catch up with your decision. Isn't that good news? So pray. My goodness, you know, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, going through some of the absolute worst trials and testings, and, and he was tempted. He was tempted to run away from the will of God. That's a temptation. Is anybody ever tempted to just give up on what you know God wants you to do? You ever tempted to just quit on the whole thing and just say, no, nah, it's just too hard. I just can't do this. Of course, we all are at different times. And he prayed, and he prayed, and he prayed. And he was under such pressure that the Bible says he sweated great drops of blood. And he went to the disciples and he found them sleeping. And he said, can you not pray with me one hour? The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So what was he saying? You got what you need inside as a born-again believer. You got what it takes inside. But we all also have a weak flesh. And so that's what we need to pray for. We need to pray that God would help us get strong enough inside that no matter what comes against us, we can resist it. God never tells us to pray that we'll never have problems. He tells us to pray that when we have them, we will be steady in the storm. Amen? It doesn't really matter where they come from. If it's something that God has permitted, if it's something the devil's doing, if it's something I permitted in my own life through my own foolishness, I don't even need to try to figure that out. I can ask God that I open a door somewhere and he'll show me if I did. If not, my main goal is to be steady in the storm. Steady in the storm. Because I don't want to take the same tests over and over and over and over and over all my life. I want to pass these tests and get on to greater things in God. Amen? And I'm sure you do too. I want that victor's crown of life. I want that badge of royalty in the spirit. Amen. Just see yourself wearing that badge. Wow. So Jesus told him to pray. He said, you need to pray because tonight you're all going to fall away. You're all going to be offended and you're all going to fall away. And old Peter pops up and says, oh, Lord, if everybody else leaves you, I would never. I would never. I don't have the time to take you to all these scriptures, but I would never. And of course, we know what happened to Peter. He was tempted. And he did have weakness in him that he did not know that he had. And what happened to Peter actually turned out to be very good for him because it exposed something in him. Now listen to me. It exposed something in him that had to be dealt with before God could use him in the way that he wanted to use him. You know, we're all tempted at times to do wrong things. It's actually just part of life. That's why God has given us the fruit of self-control. And the key is learning how to resist it. So what is the best time to pray about temptation? When you're in the midst of it or long before you're ever tempted? I think when we know we have weaknesses in areas, it's wise to pray about those things on a regular basis.